Hi everyone, I am back with another video. Uh, in this video, I would be telling you about how to create a model driven apps. So in Power Apps, as uh, you might be knowing that there are two types of apps we can create. One is model driven and another is canvas. So how to make a decision that which one is to choose. So simple rule is compare the data complexity versus UI requirements. So when I say data complexity, so I mean if you are working with a lot of transitional data and a lot of referential data, then the obvious choice is to go for the model driven apps. And when you are working with a uh, intuitive UI where you want to have a very a good UI, UX is an important factor to design that app, then possibly choose the canvas apps because model driven does come up with the forms where you can also customize but uh, the kind of uh, intuitive look it lacks a bit but with the data it works very well and it automatically gives you a lot of capability of creating views, forms and uh, as well as uh, the interactive dashboards so uh, with the with the data sort of stuff, uh, I mean like uh, for the financial applications, you may choose the model driven app. So there, there in the enterprises there are a lot of financial application which has to be migrated from old platform to the new one. Then power platform based model driven apps are the good choice to choose. So uh, saying that, I will start with a demo and I'll be explaining you how to create a simple model driven app from scratch and. Uh, how to get that uh, deployed in your production environment. So in Power Apps, you can go to your environment. So environment, uh, you can pick from uh, this sort of environment. So one is by default, which would be your production environment. But for the trial one or for the testing, you can create one PUC environment and then play with that. Or you may want to play with the directly production environment if you are having two separate instances of your lessons. So to start with, we have to create to uh, go to the solution because uh, we will be creating one new solution over here for our this demo. So in this demo, I will be just making one uh, simple room booking system uh, with this power model driven app. I will just uh, name my solution as meeting room system, meeting room booking system. So in the publisher, you can uh, choose uh, between these three. So you can just pick once it is default publisher and create it. So you, we got our environment. Now to start with, so if you think about any uh, developing any application, so there, there should be four steps to develop it. One is to create the data backend. The second is to define the security rules and the third is to create app and the fourth is to customize and uh, uh, make it more beautiful. So in starting, I am just creating one data uh, entity which would I uh, get in, in the, under the entity. So I will just create entity. So I am now I'm going to create one new entity. So as uh, we are developing meeting room booking system, then one entity should be meeting room where all the rooms will reside. So I'm just creating it. So it may take a couple of seconds to have that in place, but we can keep on working. Meanwhile, so I'm just adding another field that is uh, meeting room capacity. So this, we can pick the data right from this. So it's a, it should be a whole number because we are going to bind the business rule with the whole number as well. So I'm just creating this. Okay, so my, my entity is provisioned. So I'm just adding another couple of uh, things. For example, this location field where the meeting room is. So this location field should be option set. So we can create our own custom option set by creating this new option set option. So I'm just saying, let's say my meeting room is in uh, New York. Let's say New Delhi. So buy and save. 
Alright, so uh, all right, so uh, we got our primary fields created for the meeting room. Next step is uh, going to the business rules. So as this would be the master entity, so I would not be defining any business rules over here. I'll be just going to the data. So I need to create the records for it. So what different rooms we are having. I'll just create a couple of records there. So as you see, uh, this this uh, because we did not customize the form, so this form just took the took the default things. So because it's not coming with the room capacity and the the, the uh, room location thing, so we need to customize our forms. So I can just go over there under the main form. I'll be just clicking edit form. If I just click edit form, it will edit the form in the same window. Otherwise, it will create a new tab. So I'll just open that in a new tab. So this is a modern editor. So if uh, any one of you worked uh, with early with the Power App, then you must have seen the different look, look and feel with a classic one. You can still switch to the classic because uh, the Microsoft has not mapped all the things with the modern as of now. So possibly for a couple of stuff you may need to switch to classic. For example, field security and those stuff and the mappings has to be like done via the classic uh, uh, view. So right now uh, with this view, so modifying this main view is very simple. You have all the fields over here. You can just drag and drop. So I'm just dropping it room capacity. And uh, where is that location? Okay, so let's see, I'm just saving it. I'll just uh, go back and check that uh, where is my field that room location so location is that so I did not save the entity so I need to save it now I'll be just customizing the main form to capture the entry again There we go. So I have room locations. So I'll just drag and drop there as well. So uh, if I click on publish, it will automatically save and the publish the form and it will be available for us. So I'm just clicking on publish. So now I will create uh, records for the meeting room. So remember, these are the master data which uh, we are going to use in our uh, uh, room booking list while, while booking the room. So I'm just uh, creating few meeting rooms let's say jasmine room capacity is 12 location is new york save i can create another one that is lily location uh, capacity let's say 20 and location is Delhi. then create a new and let's say Hibiscus and uh, look uh, capacity let's say five and the location is Dubai <coughs> and save and close it will close the window automatically. So if I go back to my data, uh, if I look there, I will see uh, three meeting rooms created. There we go. And now going back to the solution, uh, I would like to create another uh, entity. So right now you can see meeting room booking system. This this having uh, this location. These are custom fields. So if the solution only displays the custom fields, I'm going back to the solution. Uh, I'm just clicking. Sorry, I'm just clicking on my meeting room system. I create a new entity again. So this entity I need uh, for for saving my room booking entries. I am just book the rooms. Though the name is confusing, but uh, this entity is for 
saving those the data the user data uh, for example if somebody is booking the room from 9 a.m to 10 a.m then these the records falls under this so this entity would be having a relationship with our earlier created entity I'm just creating good rooms so in the background uh, the entity will get provision i can keep on creating the fields so in this i would need to uh, start booking start date time and this should be date time field and end date time this will be date time save and uh, what else i would need i would need uh, the user so as we are not going to create user entity because we already have user entity uh, automatically provisioned for us in this environment <coughs> so I'll be using that under the relationship I'm just going relationship now it's an important part where I have to define that how this book rooms entity is related to our meeting rooms entity so if I just click on this relationship so you can see many to one one to many and many to one so the the entity would be many to one so i'll be just choosing the meeting room there we go yeah so all the other things you can keep it as is and as I said I will be using the users as many to one as well and it's automatically linked up over here I'm just saving this entity so this is the owner for this item so it's still uh, let's say if somebody wants to add up the thing uh, add up the meeting room for, for somebody else then uh, the delegation should work in that case I can choose the uh, or automatically or the auto provision entities which is user I'll just uh, find that out here we go so uh, I'll be creating a one uh, relationship with the user so I'll just type it as imply so that uh, I can book on behalf of anybody so I'm just clicking done so this will create one another relationship this uh, relationship uh, so now going to the business rule so these are the business rule where we can do some quick validations uh, for the for the forms for the data entry so I just uh, pending changes to entity okay I need to click save entity then uh, it is a uh, validation I can do like uh, the, the enter the uh, number of rooms capacity should be numeric or it can't be more than 30 people or uh, possibly start date and time should be at the end date time should be greater than start date time so that sort of validation I can do so I can I am I'm just quickly doing one simple one so you may explore it uh, going further so in this new condition I'm just finding checking room capacity so in this uh, uh, the conditions we automatically get the source entity and home we want to create it because I am writing this business rule on the room booking entity so it will give all the fields related to room booking so let's say i am making a validation on end date should be greater than field and then i can choose another field that is started time so if it does then what it should do if yes then i can add one uh, let's say show error so I need to just make it less than or equal to so if less than or equal to then it will show error and in error I can bind this error with the end date time 
where I can just give a message and date time should be greater than start date time so this is how I can do the validation you can just save it so validation is successful and and the important thing is if this validation will not apply until we click activate button activate so now this validation will be available for our forms so so far so good so we have created fields relationship business rules and now this view thing so these are default view which we get automatically we can create our new views or we can modify the views as well so for active rooms as you saw that uh, there is out of the box status activity based on this uh, this active rooms uh, views was created so you can have your uh, custom view as well based on room booked or open sort of that so for now i am just not touching these views i'm just going to the forms because this thing would be important so these three forms are the out of the box forms the main form is the form where we actually capture the data so this is the important one so i'll just uh, added this because i would like to have few another fields over here uh, with with uh, out of the box fields okay so i am just creating the start adding the start date and the end date time so now i have this name and uh, name i can change the name field label as uh, meeting name right okay so this meeting name owner i can just put uh, the what else is left okay so i can just add one component it's a quick view component i'll just put it over here so this is what actually i am i would like to make a relationship because I would be selecting the meeting room then the meeting room detail should be displayed in some pane so that I can see what capacity that meeting room has and I can book accordingly I'm just selecting this meeting room and this uh, information done so now I'll just uh, make this form uh, look a bit better I'll just uh, go to the form and and uh, I'll just uh, change the formatting of it instead of one column I'll just pick uh, two columns so just click on publish so now our form is published and uh, the next thing is data so this data you would be capturing from our app so now we are done with our entity data model so now we'll just go to our solution back so in solution now i will be creating sorry uh, in solution now i will be creating one app and this time i will be choosing model driven app so as i said because uh, this form uh, this meeting room can have large number of rows and the lot number of data the transition thing can can grow like uh, the time to time so i would be choosing model driven app and as well as the the, the direct use case of using this model driven app to work with a financial uh, application for example some chargeback application some uh, creating data transition data let's say somebody wants to get uh, the budget approved for something then it should fall under this so that sort of application we can create though the ui uh, on the uh, the control the amount of control on what we are having on the ui is a bit limited in comparison to canvas but still it's a right way of uh, doing the application quickly and uh, the the time to market would be very quickly just creating this app meeting room booking system And this logo and uh, the welcome page you can uh, change according to your uh, requirement I'm just clicking done so now the interesting part so 
Once we create this app, this automatically gives a few sections. And the first is sitemap. So this are uh, this this is the actual navigation component. How your application would navigate through. So if I click on this edit pencil icon, then I'll get this area. So this what this area means that how what would be there on your app on the home page and what would be in their left pane or the left tabs. So in the area, I'm just uh, renaming it as uh, booking room booking system in the new group i can rename it as meeting room book a meeting room and the sub area uh, this is the critical part so in the sub area with what entity you would like to match it up so i can select entity i can type uh, book, book rooms there is my entity and uh, I can give it a title or ID so I'm just leaving as is so here we are having this now as as uh, we have created meeting rooms the detail of uh, meeting rooms as well so somebody who would like to book a room may want to uh, see the details of the meeting room then I can have the another area or even I can have another group under this existing area only so let's say so let's say I'm just adding one another group that is meeting room info so what this group area would have it will be having it will be having one subgroup sub area and that uh, would be our meeting room entity there we go so it will display all the meetings from there so i'm just clicking save and close so now we have site map done so as you see whatever entity i chose it actually displayed under beneath it so the other two things are dashboard so because of the time constraint i would not be covering dashboard how to create an interactive dashboard but possibly in next session i will cover that up quickly i would like to capture this uh, uh, business process flows so this is being used with any of the model driven app to provide the business logics so for example i would like to tie up any approval flow with any entity entity items then i would be creating a new business process flow from here so in this our meeting room uh, stuff we would not be having that uh, any sort of uh, business process flow attached so i'm skipping it but i'll just give a quick shot like how this business process flow works i'm just creating one new and this would be this would not be having any relationship with meeting room booking, booking but just for sake uh, you understand it so i'm just showing you to it uh, uh, very quickly to you okay so i'm just typing a business let's say meeting room business process okay so i need to select the entity for it so let's say i'm tying up with the room booking meeting room Groups here. So now this will give us uh, some uh, business process management pane where I can define, drag and drop our my my business process and data components. I'll just show you that. So like it does not have any relationship with the meeting rooms, but still showing you. So this gives us this thing uh, the the stages where i can define the data step components let's say in any of the application if i need to capture some data from user then i would be using the data step component for example uh, let's say let's say i am capturing the status from the user 
okay and after status if I can add the other let's say condition so in the condition let's say if status is active is value and I can choose is active then it should allow to book a room so I'll just add another stage and in the stage I'll just simply say uh, if I would like to capture then I can capture or otherwise I can just make it okay room booked I can set something there so though like I'll just capture let's see where is that employee and just saving it so this is just for for showing you how this works otherwise uh, if if your uh, this application needs it then you can have it otherwise you can skip this as well all right done so you can see added security rules you can define the security rules for this BPM who can access what over here so this is very critical and important stuff so though I would like to cover the security roles in a separate altogether session because that is pretty much important so for now I'm just keeping that open just closing it so now we have created sitemap we have created business process and these are there so we are almost there so I'll just close so now I in the components I have now my own entities my this my uh, this app so everything all almost done so I'll just uh, go back to my app I'll just publish it so I should get a play button over here so these are model driven apps I'll just click on it okay so now I have that play button so I'll just play good so this is the dashboard this is the first page of our app so though I said you I told you that uh, we would be creating interactive dashboard going forward so for that uh, we will be using that dashboard uh, customizer stuff but right now you can see in the left navigation we have that meet book and meeting room which was uh, one area and other book rooms was sub area and again this meeting rooms and meeting room info so this meeting room info should be displaying all the meeting rooms which we have so as you see this is only displaying the name and the created date but not room not uh, but not the capacity and the location so because we did not customize this uh, this active rooms uh, uh, view or we did not create any, any custom view so though from the end user perspective end user can create a view whatever view uh, the fields they want based on any of the condition from here I'm not uh, going in that detail but I'm just going back to the room booking system so if I click on this new button so you see these are custom page which I show you earlier and if you see in the top you can see that there is a one uh, visible flow uh, with a new stage new stage because I did not for the sake of showing you I showed that you so if you see if I click on click over here it gives me active state of this meeting room and we cannot we cannot proceed to the stage 2 until unless uh, we save this record so I'm just saving it let's say this is a power app meeting and with the power app meeting the start date, date and time so you see uh, the, the time cannot be uh, less than this it actually gave that uh, validation error so I just uh, realize that I did not put that meeting room in place this uh, drop down for selecting the meeting rooms I need to go back to the designer and under the meeting room entity I need to go back there and this is again a one shortcut way of editing your forms I'm just clicking on it so it will throw me that form I just added this meeting room drop down I'm just selecting creating this power app power model driven meeting and I'm selecting hibiscus 
okay so as uh, while creating that form i created that as a uh, lookup or a quick view form and it showed me all the entries related to this information this meeting information so from the lookup thing i can uh, from the lookup i can search for employees within the company so right now i got one so i'm just booking for this person and start date and time let's say this i believe Okay, so I believe uh, while creating that business rule, we created that uh, at the wrong side, uh, at the wrong way. So it, it's checking, it's checking the wrong condition. So that's not a problem. So we can just edit and go back and change the business rule. So I told you about this BPM as well. So I'm just saving this record. Okay, so now this record is saved. You can just. Uh, navigate across this so this panel driven training meeting is there meeting is there so i think like we are almost there so in this uh, session we learned about how to create the entities under the cds and then how to create the customize the forms and uh, then how to embed the bpm uh, the business process flows with the uh, entities and uh, as well as like how to create the sitemaps so i hope uh, this model driven app you are you are, you are find, finding it helpful for creating or for creating real time applications for your organization in a quick time uh, consider the scenario where you have to build 50 applications in just couple of months time then possibly going through a route of doing from some some scratch development even in dotnet or sharepoint would not be that much uh, feasible or would not that much cost effective then uh, this power platform with the power, power model driven apps would be a solution for it so i think like uh, you like this session that's it for me thank you